chlorine, bromine, pH up, pH down, alkalinity, water hardness, algae stopper, oxidizer, shock, sanitizer. What does it all mean? Today, we're going to eliminate the insanity and get some clarity around what hot tub chemicals that you need in your hot tub and which ones you don't that are a total waste of money. That's what we're talking about in today's video. In truth, 99% of the time, you only need a few basic things. You don't need a whole shelf full of things. You need some shock, like this one. And a shock can be either chlorine or non-chlorine. Sometimes it's called oxidizer. Basically, this is something you'll add to your hot tub about once a week because it preserves and refreshes the chlorine or the bromine that you're using to sanitize the water. I like a chlorine shock, but you can use a non-chlorine shock as well. And you can use either one, whether you're using bromine or chlorine as your sanitizer. The plus of a non-chlorine shock is that you can get in your hot tub a lot quicker if you use that as opposed to a chlorine shock. A non-chlorine shock, you can be sitting and soaking in your hot tub within 20 minutes of adding that. Chlorine shock will take a little bit longer. Next, you're gonna need a sanitizer. I like this one. This is 100% bromine. You can also use chlorine too, but chlorine has a few downsides that I don't like. For one, there's that strong chlorine smell that you smell like at a swimming pool. Next, it, there comes the burning of the eyes. But the main reason I don't like chlorine in my hot tub is that chlorine isn't designed to take the high heat of a hot tub. Bromine will last much longer because it's designed to take the heat. It can stand up to the temperatures that you're going to set your hot tub to. So you'll find that even though chlorine is a little bit cheaper, you'll be adding it a lot more frequently than you will if you use bromine. Next, you have things that adjust the pH and the alkalinity. And in a little bit in this video, we'll get into some of the differences between pH and alkalinity because there is a lot of confusion. But you'll have products that, like this one that show pH up or pH down. Uh, but then the, those are really the things that you're going to need on a regular basis. You're not going to need any other chemicals on a regular ongoing basis. So you can set aside things like defoamer or algicide. 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not going to need those because you'll be doing a good job of maintaining your water chemistry with the other things that we already talked about. Those things are mostly needed when the water quality is really, really poor and not properly maintained. Next, we're going to talk about the difference between pH and alkalinity because they're very confusing to a lot of people and they were to me as well when I first started getting into this. pH is a measure of the acidity in your hot tub's water. Just like any other water, it can have a high level of acidity or a low level. Alkalinity, by comparison, measures the ability of the water to neutralize incoming acid. So it's very possible to have alkaline water, in other words, not acidic, but also have low alkalinity where it can't handle processing new acid that's coming into the water. So a lot of times you'll see products that are designed to raise or lower both, like these that say spa up and spa down. And that can be a little confusing for people who want to just raise one or the other. You will also find products that are specific for pH like this one. It's pH up or pH down. But because they do interact with one another, it's more common to find products that raise or lower both. A few things you want to know about pH. Too low of a pH can cause burning in the eyes the same way a high level of chlorine can. It can also corrode the metal pipes in your hot tub, such as in the heater section. Too high of a pH, though, can severely limit the effectiveness of the chlorine or the bromine, causing you either to need to add more to the water than you would otherwise, but also it can uh, cause the, the water to be bacteria-filled and, and to be unsafe to soak in. So it's very important that you keep good levels of both alkalinity and pH. I test mine every time I get into the hot tub, and you should too. Another ninja tip that you should know about that will help the effectiveness of the chemicals that you add to your hot tub and cause you to have to add them less frequently is when you go to change the water in your hot tub, and you should do that about every three months, maybe five months if you're really on top of your water chemistry and your filter maintenance. But about every three months or so, you're gonna change the water in this hot tub. And before you do that, 
I like to pour in a product called Oyuk oh Hot Tub Cleaner. They make a wide variety of products for all kinds of jetted tubs, hot tubs, jacuzzis, etc., uh, even bathtubs. And you just pour it in before you change the water. You turn the jets on, you let it circulate through the system, and what it does is it goes through all of the jets and the pipes in your side, inside of your hot tub. Your hot tub has a very complex system of pipes inside of it, and over time, contaminants in the water, bacteria buildup, other things, dead skin flaking off, oils, body lotions, cologne. Over time, those things can build up inside of the pipes and they lead to um, something called biofilm, which really limits the effectiveness of the chlorine or the bromine that you're using to sanitize it and the shock that you're using to oxidize it. When you have high levels of biofilm in there, you'll notice that you have to add those chemicals a lot more frequently than you used to. So what I do is I pour in that oh yuck I let it circulate for a little bit, and then I drain my hot tub completely. I clean it out, I refill it, I retest the water, and I adjust everything as needed, and I'm good to go. And because I took that extra step of cleaning out the pipes, my chlorine, my bromine, my sanitizers, my shock, all of those things are going to be a whole lot more effective than they were before because I took the time to get rid of that biofilm. As I mentioned, my name is Jeff Campbell. This is my channel, Hot Tub Owner HQ. I also have my website, hottubownerhq.com, where I share all kinds of tips about owning, maintaining, repairing, fixing leaks, doing all kinds of things that you're going to need to know how, about your hot tub as well. I've learned a lot over owning my four hot tubs, and I hope my tips will help you. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up subscribe to this channel, hit that bell notification so you get notified of future videos just like this one. Leave me a comment in the section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you'd like to see in future videos. Again, thanks for being here. This is HotTubOwnerHQ.com.